Hello and welcome to this brand new Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. This is just a very simple tutorial explaining how to bring some of the generators from motion into Final Cut Pro 10. Now this is going to be one of the first of a few videos as we go further and further in depth looking at setting up rigs and different joint parameters so we can uh, control several different uh, individual parameters with a single slider. We, we'll get into stuff like that as we go along. But first of all, what we're going to do is take the lens flare plugin from Motion, which comes built in, and literally put it into Final Cut so you can use it as if it were a native Final Cut plugin. Let's just have a quick look at how it's going to look. You can see that over here in the inspector, we've got access to all the different parameters you'd ever want to adjust the lens flare. You've got the uh, streak intensity, the streak count, uh, you've obviously also got the size and fall off at the moment it's set to over here. The other cool thing is we're going to learn how to ensure that we also get the on-screen controls such as this slider here. So you don't just have to manually change the center up in the parameters but you've actually got the on-screen con control so it's literally just like a Final Cut Pro 10 plugin. Let's take a look at how to do this. So let's jump over to Motion. Okay, now we're in motion. What we want to do is create a new Final Cut, cut generator. On the preset, we're going to make sure that we set it to uh, broadcast HD 1080p. I'm going to set it to 25 frames a second. And we can set the duration just to 10 seconds. It's not that important. We'll explain as we go along. And now we're just going to press open. So this is going to bring us with a nice new blank canvas. From here, we can just go over to the generators menu over here choose generators and choose the lens flare. Straight away we get this nice simple looking lens flare which is exactly mm. the tool that we want to import into Final Cut. So how do we do this? Basically to import generators into Final Cut we basically just have to tell Motion that we want to be able to change all the parameters and then we save it. It's really quite simple. So let's go over to, into the inspector up here and under generator, you can see we've got all these different sliders, color toggles to manipulate the lens flare. We literally just want to click on this drop down arrow on each of them and press publish. It doesn't take long. If you think there's something that you're not going to need, then obviously you can save time by ignoring them. To tell a joke whilst doing this. I, I'm never prepared. Never prepared at all. Have you guys missed me? What a cynical, silly question to ask. Of course you yeah. have. I've been recovering from an operation. Nothing serious. But I've been absent nonetheless. Okay, we've pressed all the publish buttons for all the different parameters for this generator. What we also want to press is this Dot, uh, tick box down here which is publish OSC off screen control sorry on screen controls which is what we mentioned earlier about being able to drag around the center of the lens flare inside the viewer rather than having to change it in the inspector dialog box. Now that we've set all these parameters up to publish we want to save this generator so we're going to press file save as create a new category I'm going to call this Dan's generators. You can call it whatever you want. And then we're going to call this Lens Flare with capital letters because it's so important. Under theme, we don't really need to set a theme, we're just going to leave that as none. And we're going to save preview movie and include unused media. The unused media is important as we will see. Press publish, it's going to go ahead and export this out as a generator. Then you don't need to restart either Motion or Final Cut. Once it's done, you literally hop back over into Final Cut. And on the generators, you can see that we've now got a Dan's Generators subheading under the generators. Subheading, I, uh, I assume that's the right term. And we can scrub over this because we published the preview. And what we want to do is just drag it out onto our footage. I'm just going to drag it onto my existing lens flare and choose replace just to get rid of it. 
And by publishing the unused media, this basically means we can stretch out the duration of this lens flare for a, a infinite duration. With the lens flare selected, uh, make sure the inspector showing and and choose generator, and then you can see all the different parameters that we told it to publish. If we didn't choose publish on any of them, they wouldn't show up here. So it's it's quite customizable and nice like so. So from here, we can obviously change all these to Larry horrendous colors. So you've got something really disgusting. Like that, we just zoom in. You can see how much of a wonderful lens flare that looks. But you're thinking, hang on, I've got a lens flare, that looks great, but where's the footage? It's very simple. Head over to video. And on opacity, choose blend mode and set it to screen. This is basically going to overlay it on the image, ignoring the black and dark tones, using itself as an alpha mat, essentially, or a luma mat, rather. And there you have it. You've now managed to take the lens flare generator from motion and bring it into Final Cut, and it's forever going to be in your generators. Like I said, this will be followed up by a couple more tutorials going further in depth in the relationship between Final Cut Pro and motion, so we can start to learn how to really get them working together because it's little things like this that if you can get away with and save like five minutes of time rather than having to say load up After Effects and do an extensive effects, especially if you're not going to be doing the finished lens flare, this is a great reference point to establish what you're trying to achieve. Okay, so thanks for watching and I'll see you guys soon in a brand new tutorial video or whatnot.